Okay, I'm going to do a quick revision on the chapter on electromagnetic induction. So for this chapter, okay, what uh, there are lots of important keywords and key phrases you must uh, always take note of. Okay, so firstly, just remind you that okay, for electromagnetic induction, what are you doing is that you're from a magnetic field and a coil or wire or just a wire, you are getting induced current on EMF. So a typical situation like is like this, right? And when a magnet is moved towards the solenoid or moved away, okay, what do you get? Okay, what do you observe? What do you see? You say you will see a momentary deflection in a galvanometer, okay, either to the left or to the right. Okay, and what does it imply? It implies there's an induced EMF or induced current flowing in the in the circuit. Okay, so in your first page, you'll notice this is all quite obvious, right? It follows a certain logic that if, let's say, you were to move the North Pole towards the solenoid, okay, there is a momentary deflection to the right. So if you move the North Pole away, there will be a deflection to the left momentarily, right? And of course, that also means that induced current is flowing in the opposite direction. So this is quite intuitive and you should have not much problem describing your observation or the implication. And likewise, for the ways of increasing the induced current of EMF, right, you will just to observe from the diagram, you can say that, okay, I use stronger magnets, move the speed of magnet faster, uh, towards or away from the core, increase the number of turns of the solenoid, or place a soft iron core to concentrate and strengthen the magnet field. So these are not much of a problem, just use the right terms. Okay, the reason behind all this, as I keep saying in class, is that there is a change of magnetic flux. Okay, uh, you can either say change of magnetic flux, or you can, or say that there is a cutting of magnetic field by the coil. Okay, so pay attention here also to the definition of electromagnetic induction. If you are asked what is electromagnetic induction in just one sentence, okay, learn to write this down. Okay, then comes the various situations. Okay, so uh, another situation is that when you have a circuit like this, right, in circuit A, circuit A is going to provide the magnetic field, menu, and circuit B is the coil where the light bulb will light up. Okay, so in this situation, look at the way I write the reason, okay, why the bulb here lights up. So what happens, you read here, the moment the switch is closed, okay, current is flowing in the solenoid, uh, a circuit A, in the solenoid of circuit A, this sets up a magnetic field, right? And then this, what will this result in is that the light bulb in B lights up momentarily as there is a change in magnetic field. There you go, use a reason, right? In B, right? Or there is an increasing magnetic field. So this is also another good term to use. Increasing magnetic field in solenoid B. Okay? Which results in induced EMF, induced current momentarily. Okay? So when that, the circuit A remains closed, there is no induced current EMF. Why? There is no change in magnetic field. Right? So all this, you must always have your reasons. Okay? And these reasons are follow you throughout all the whole chapter in the various situations okay that you're given all right so you read this through go through this by yourself and then also if take note what happens when there's an ac supply okay when you use an ac supply so when you describe okay describe it step by step and clearly i hope you can see okay when an ac current flows through the solenoid a it says a uh, uh, constantly changing magnetic field right so what happens the light bulb will light up continuously as there is a constantly changing magnetic field in solenoid b okay and as a result of this okay your light bulb will light up continuously why because this magnetic field is continuously changing or you can also use the word continuously alternating right so know how to use these terms, change of magnetic field, change of magnetic flux, or increasing magnetic field, or decreasing magnetic field. It comes very useful, okay? Alright, next is the, okay.
Okay, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction basically is just saying what I just said, okay, and it gives the reason the rate of change of magnetic flux in a circuit all right, is proportional to the magnitude of induced EMF. So if you were to say uh, there is a, if the magnet moves towards a coil at a greater speed, what happens? Okay, you will see there's greater induced EMF. Why? Because there's a greater rate of change of magnetic flux. So there you go again. That is again very useful term to use when describing. Okay, so learn how to use these terms. Okay, next, let's talk about Lenz law. Okay, so what is Lenz law? Okay, it's trying to help you tell the direction of the induced current in a solenoid. Okay when a magnet or some action is going to produce it. Okay, so read this, the direction of induced EMF or current acts in a way to oppose the action producing it. So what is the action here? Okay, so the action is this magnet is moving towards the circuit, okay, or the solenoid. So that's the action. So a north pole is moving towards. And as your north pole is moving towards, to oppose this action, this end here, will be a north, right? So it's like the north wants to come into your house to oppose it, you don't want the north to come in. So you set up a north in order to oppose it. So the current has to flow in a way to set up a north at this end, right? And I hope you can remember, how do you find the direction of current? Then you have to use the right hand grip rule, okay? To find the direction of the current, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, direction and current. So if you do that, your thumb will be pointing this way, right? Where your thumb points is the north, right? Okay, so that's Lenz law. So what you need to learn and know is how to explain using Lenz law, right? So quote the law in doing your explanation. So you look at something like this, go and study this, how you quote the law and help yourself to explain it, okay? So, you need to practice this and look at some examples. Okay, next, we talk about Fleming's right-hand rule. Okay, there's Fleming's left-hand rule in the previous chapter of electromagnetism. So, there's this right-hand rule. Okay, so the right-hand rule will tell you the direction of the induced current when you have a single wire and a magnetic field. Just like, for example, in here in example one. Okay, so... The thumb, remind you, shows the direction of motion. The feel is by your uh, index finger and the current by your second finger. Okay, so always remember when you say feel, especially the feel is pointing in a north-south direction, right? And the current direction, the finger points in a conventional flow of current, okay? So when you apply this, always, as I taught you, okay, use... Okay, remember the, the three fingers are right angles to each other and you should you can always start with the magnetic field first. Okay, that will be easiest. Okay, so if the field is going from north to south, like this case, then you point your finger north to south, the index finger north to south. Then you find that the force is going down, so the thumb will point down. Okay, it's very hard for me to show you on a video, okay, but I hope you get the idea, right? So thumb points down and then you will discover that the current flows from A to B. Okay, you have to practice this by yourself. Huh? Okay, if you find it a bit difficult, then maybe you want to draw a side view diagram. You just imagine you are looking from this end. So what do you see? You see north here, you see B is here, and you see south is here. And then this is a dot. Dot meaning the current is coming out. Okay, so perhaps this might be easier, uh, easier perspective for you to see. Right, so again, the north south be this way the force is down and then the uh, force pointing down you will discover that the induced current is coming out okay so they, that's why it is a dot okay so try apply it on your own okay and practice this okay so on to the next page the next page would be on direct um, AC generator again this looks like a DC motor okay the difference is that there is no batteries okay 
it looks like it okay but in, you look carefully there's no battery here in a, in a DC motor there will be battery in a DC motor they will be using split rings instead of slip rings okay so again go and revise through this again by yourself look through the notes here which you should have copied already in class okay it's again using the same reasoning all right and uh, for every and as the call uh, rotates every half revolution the direction of induced current of coil changes right so as a result of that you will get a alternating current okay so take note also that when when the uh, coil is in a vertical position like this okay you have no induced current okay how do you know okay when the direction of force is parallel to the direction of magnetic field you have no induced current all right so do revise this for yourself huh? okay then the graph of which you will get is a sine graph okay or you can even get a cosine graph okay depending the position by which you start your uh, the the coil from okay whether it's horizontal or vertical position okay so this is application of it so all this is like two pages long it's like very long to remember so i do have a shortened version okay you remember the shortened version is found over here all right as one of my worksheet questions page 46 okay so and i put it side by side the dc motor ac generator okay so that you can compare and see the difference okay so this is much shorter version on how to explain uh, how a dc motor works and how ac generator works and seeing the difference between the two all right okay so the other application of um of our this chapter electromagnetic induction is of course the transformer okay okay and the transformer there are two types of step transformer a step up transformer and a step down transformer okay firstly what does the transformer do well it changes the voltage right so when you step up it steps up the voltage increases the voltage from from the source voltage right and step down then it decreases the voltage okay so first thing you need to know of course how to draw a basic transformer okay and as you study this okay uh, the next thing you would want to pay attention to of course is when you explain okay it's again very similar to what you do before okay you start from the left over here at the primary coil and you, and you explain in this manner okay i'm not going to read through everything but you will see again many of the uh, important phrases are repeatedly used again as like what we have done before right so if you are asked in particular how a step down transformer works okay then there's this additional so-called like paragraph okay that since there is less coils on the secondary coil there is a decrease in the rate of cutting so look at this okay so that is a good phrase to use okay we are basically quoting faraday's law right so since there's a decrease in rate of cutting there will be a decrease in the induced emf in the secondary coil so again a good way of phrasing uh, your answer right and of course one of the things in transformers okay as you revise this there is this is the only section where there's calculation okay you will be making use of this formula especially and remember it carefully ns over np equals vs over v and is equals to ip over is okay not is over ip huh? okay and also don't get confused with what is s p and so on okay s is the number of turns secondary coil p is a primary coil so anything that do with p okay is a primary coil Okay, or what we call the input side right and then s is a secondary coil and that will be on your output side right so learn to use this formula okay and of course the other formulas that follow it as well okay p equals iv and so on okay and know the users of transformers okay and uh, and then as you go through this the next thing you take note is also the advantages of ac over dc transmission right that why is it we use ac right and not dc okay because the main reason is that it can be more easily and cheaply changed from one voltage to another okay 
and when you use AC you can transmit at high voltages and a low current so with a low current okay there will be uh, less energy loss in the cables maybe I'll just write this down as you are as current transmitted is low okay so you are using a, a high voltage and a low current okay so with a low current there's less energy loss and as a result of this your cables can also be thinner right and being thinner means you will be saving on cost right if you if instead your current was large then that might pose a problem why because thin cables have high resistance okay and that may cause overheating and for the wires to uh, might even burn right okay so take note about the advantages right and there are so, so just two formulas which you are familiar with which we often use here okay p equals iv is one of them right so this is the power supply at the power station and this is usually very large Okay, so you have a choice, make I or V large. Okay, so you will usually want to make uh, V very large so that the I can be small, right? Very small. So then when a current runs through your cables and since I is small and then resistance of cable, okay, you also, um, you, you also don't want it to be too large. Then your power loss, okay, in the cables will be small okay so this is the this r what's this r okay resistance in cables okay so these are useful formulas when you uh, when you are solving calculation problems okay to do with this right so so that is a very quick revision so then what you need to do is of course look at the various kinds of questions that you have all right so do go and revise the calculation aspect is usually not too difficult just be careful uh, when you are thinking what is the input voltage which is VP which is VS and so on okay don't get confused with that okay and also make use of our idea that input voltage goes output voltage in an ideal transformer right so then of course you have to practice a lot of questions here especially to do electromagnetic induction because sometimes you can get weird looking questions huh? so as you have done your practice in applying lens law so you need to practice on that all right so as you practice always bear in mind to use your keywords key phrases correctly right okay so that we all i hope this helps you in your revision of this chapter